Hi! What you're looking at is an inside wall remote control from a Newtone N2561 N2562 radio intercom system. This particular one is a new old stock unit and it was manufactured in 1967. The purpose of this originally was this would be mounted on the wall inside someone's home and it has no speaker built into it and then you would have a remotely mounted speaker usually in the ceiling. It put the intercom controls in a convenient location but put the music maybe in the middle of the room where it would fill up the room and sound better. It was a very popular thing to use back in those days. There's a similar unit which is designed for outdoor patio use. Back in those days, there were no self-contained small wall-mounted patio stations for systems like that. What you would always have is a patio wall-mounted remote control and then a patio speaker mounted up on the wall or somewhere else on the house out in the yard area. And again, it's the same idea. Put the controls where it's convenient and put the speaker where you want the sound. Of course, when you did that, it kind of defeats the purpose of the intercom system because if this is over on the wall, by the patio door and the speaker is down there 12 feet next to the barbecue you really can't use it as an intercom system because you can't move the switch here and yell down there it's not going to work so it's really would be a music only setup in that application but lots of times the patio speakers right on the wall up above the control is just up higher so it spreads the sound out into the yard better there are very little differences on indoor and outdoor equipment back in those days the 256162 system originally came came out in 1961 and it was in manufacture all the way through the end of 1973 which is a really long time. Outdoor stations in those days were not highly weatherized or weatherproofed for outdoor use. They were moder moderately adjusted for outdoor use and they held up pretty well but not always as good as you would want. This particular unit is a flush mount unit as the patio version would be and it was designed to mount in a standard double gang electrical ring which would be mounted inside the wall and then the siding or whatever stucco would go on and these screws attached to the electrical ring. Of course if you had irregular exterior surfaces on your house if you had stucco or siding with grooves or something like that where the edge of the face plate sits against the wall there's going to be little cracks and things and then water has the potential of getting down inside of course that's a big no-no in a house especially in today's world with people worrying about mold and so forth uh, it would be i assume people in those days it would still be sealed in some ways with some caulking or whatever they had in the 60s i'm not sure to help keep the water out but the problem with this is if water does get into it all of the controls are very exposed on the inside of the unit and in an inside unit this is fine but an outside unit was made somewhat differently to combat that a genuine outdoor Newtone remote wall station there was a big gasket that covered over all of this switch assembly to help keep water out in case it dripped down from outside so what we're going to do is I have two of these and they're actually going to go into a project tomorrow for a local customer. We're resurrecting his N2561 system from 1973. He needs two outdoor patio remote controls because these get all gnarly outside. The plastic becomes all deformed and warped uh, after being outside for nearly, what, 46 years. And it starts to fall apart and the controls eventually all seem like they get wet and then they rust and corrode and they just don't work very well. The problem with trying to find the outdoor versions of these is like finding any outdoor version of any piece of Newtone intercom equipment. Equipment that's put outside is the equipment that fails first because it's simply outside and therefore any equipment that was left over when the models were discontinued, it gets used up fairly quickly and then it becomes really 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 hard to find. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take these two that we have for the project tomorrow and we're going to convert them into outdoor stations so we can put them in our customer's house. So let me show you how we do that. The first thing we have to do is we have to disassemble it which is pretty easy to do. There's one screw right here and you take that out and then the insert comes out of the trim ring so we'll put this aside for now and we don't want to lose our screw and then there would be 
there are th three other screws. There's a screw down here and a screw over here and one right here. This is the only one that's in place now. The other two I have, but they've been taken out earlier. So we'll take out this screw. Don't want to lose it. And then we'll take our knobs off. And as I show in all videos, you need something to put everything in. So we're going to use one of our little metal cups because that way you won't lose things. I talk about the little metal cups in a lot of videos, especially videos about repairing your Newtone chimes and you should put the springs and parts for the chime in the cup and people do that, but they still lose things. So where did our little screw go? It's down in there somewhere. There it is. See, we found it in the cup. All right, so here's our remote control and there is this gasket that was on the face of it like this. And this is for indoor use, and it's, I suppose, to keep dirt and dust from entering through the openings in the front of the trim plate and get keeping off the switches because all of this is inside the wall cavity inside your house. And while that's a much drier and possibly cleaner environment than outdoor on a patio or, or on an outside wall, they still get kind of dirty. And we have a video I just made recently that shows how to extremely clean the switches in these. So you should watch that too. So what we're gonna do to convert this is, we're gonna make a gasket for it. So what I have here is some gasket material. And this is simply, I don't remember, this is some kind of butyl something rubber. This is the same kind of rubber that they make inner tubes out of. I don't remember exactly the name of it. And you can buy it in rolls. It's available in a lot of places. You want to make sure you don't get something that's too thick because then it will interfere with how the switches operate. And all I did with this was I used, I measured out the size that I thought I needed. This is about 12 by 8. And I used the original gasket as a template to mark out the openings for the holes that I need for the controls to fit through. And so what we're going to do is, we're gonna put this on first, like this, and you can see because we've done this reasonably precisely, it all lines up. And then we'll take this one that came with it originally. This one is somewhat heavier, so I think it's good to put this on top of the thinner, more flexible one, like this. And then, we need to put this back in our bezel. Or maybe this is the faceplate and the other one's the bezel. Like this. And then, we're gonna put our screws And putting the screws in is a little tricky because the holes are sort of offset. So once you get it, the screw in the hole, then you have to line it up with the post on the back of the face plate to get it started. Once you get it started, it's not bad. Of course, these are slotted screws because this is old school stuff and nobody used Phillips back in those days, it seems. We'll put that in there. Now, when you tighten these down into the posts in the back of the faceplate, you don't want to over tighten them because at this point, as old as these are, 52 years old, the plastic may be somewhat brittle, even though it's been sitting in a box on the shelf for a long time. And you don't want to crack the posts where the screws go in. You just need to tighten them down and snug them just a little bit and that'll be fine. Then we have to put one right here. What I like to do with this one is, I don't punch a hole for this one through the gasket. What I do is I wait till I get the other two in place and then I use a small screwdriver to sort of punch a very small hole in because this is at the top and if there is any type of water leak, you don't want any bigger of a hole than it needs to be. And 
And this way, when you put the screw in, it kind of pushes through the gasket material and you, it makes a better seal. Once you've got that in place, now you have this big floppy gasket hanging out of the back of the control. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our control back in the bezel. And we'll put our screw back in here. To put it all back together. And there you have it. It's all back together. We have to put the knobs on, but I have to clean the switches and things before I do that. So the purpose of the big floppy gasket is when I go out to the customer's house tomorrow, I will remove his old ones. I will disconnect all eight of the wires from the master station and the two wires that go to the remotely mounted speakers. I'll connect them up to this unit. And then before this gets put into the wall, what we're gonna do is you take the gasket and you fold it over like this and I'll put a piece of tape. And what I use typically is this fiberglass reinforced tape like this, or the other thing you can use which works really well, especially on the rubber, is you can use duct tape. Duct tape works really well. So you put that like that, and then you take the ends and you fold it up and put a piece of tape, and then fold up the other end like this and put a piece of tape. And if you wanna take some electrical tape and wrap it around to seal it up, that's fine. And what you end up with is this rubber gasket cover for all the switches so if any water drips or got down between the edge of the bezel and the wall it's just going to hit the rubber and it's going to run off it's not going to get on the controls and this is actually more of a cover than what the original outdoor units had that newton made so this works really well i've done this for a really long time this way and it just simply works really well so that's how you can convert an indoor wall remote control into an outdoor wall remote control and this is true not only for this particular one but there are other models other versions that you can do this with also because finding new old stock inside ones is a lot easier than finding new old stock outside ones so if you can convert it over you can put it to use and get your patio speaker working again because spring is here and everybody wants to sit outside have a lemonade and listen to the ball game I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.